Okay, we're, we're holding over here um, Dalit, page 208 Dalit. Kol shiva seyom korei v'lomi b'toch ha For seven days, a person reads and he le- learns in the sukkah. Ushemeven b'dagdei mashiikro. We're speaking about the setting. The sukkah is not distracting, and it's comfortable. He's able to understand and do the analysis when he learns in the sukkah. V'yumod yoch v'yumod yochol v'yumod chutz the sukkah. Kadesh they datum yushev solov. He says uchshemeven b'dagdei mashiikro chutz the sukkah. Kadesh they datum yushev solov. Here he says, in terms of reading, Koshivish Yom Korei Velom Toch Asuka, Ukshemevenu Medagdik Bashi Yikro, Chutz Lasuka, Kadeshi Tatum Yusheva Solov, but you're permitted to leave the Sukha if you're, you're able to be, your mind to be more settled and more tranquil to do the analysis that you can do outside the Sukha. A Mispaleo, Rotsa Mispaleo Basuka Chutz Lasuka. So if you want to be Mava Sedra, right? Or you want to study a Musa Sefer, which it doesn't take that much focus and attentiveness that you do in the Sukkah, but something which it needs more application and you need a whole different mindset and the setting is not conducive to it, then you could leave, leave the Sukkah. To learn elsewhere, you want to go learn at this Medrash. Not able to learn in the Sukkah. He says, when it comes to davening, in the Sukkah or at the Sukkah. Well, it's understood. If you can't get a minion, you definitely go outside the sukkah. Sukkah is not, let's say, a person's sukkah is not large enough to accommodate a minion. So if, you sp- so if you're supposed to have one a minion, so good. So the sukkah is not, is not the appropriate, appropriate location to have a minion. Okay, let's see the Mishnah Burah. Gimel. No Mishnah Burah on this. No, we have doubt. What? It's not as conducive. It says Ratzah. When it comes to davening, he says you have a choice. It doesn't have to be. That if you understand and you're able to do the analysis to a greater degree, why? Because just either it's the, the, the atmosphere or the air. He says everything's based on the situation. The Imdatu Yushev if he's more relaxed and more tranquil and is less distracted in the sukkah, sheish lo b'nuch Hashem, lo meid b'sukkah, so that's where you should learn, learn the sukkah. Fom motzi sheish kor mitztayer, but the times the sukkah is cold and you're actually in a state of discomfort, it's not enough discomfort to leave the sukkah eating-wise, but for learning, it's, it's a distraction. The cold doesn't allow you to be, to focus as well. Mi'eshem harbi likros lai b'dimur hu poter, v'mi'esh lo torach rav, Lavi svarim harbi limodum sukkah. That's interesting. Let's see, you need many svarim to learn, to do the research. And it's too difficult for you to transport, transfer all the svarim from the house into the sukkah. Efshir to put Maybe. Maybe you're exempt. Because it's, uh, it's, not, it's not the proper location for learning. But if, let's say you can put a bookcase in your sukkah, and all the svarim that you need for sukkahs so you're able to have in the sukkah, he says you bring them into the sukkah before sukkahs. The aim is that Torah, because it's not, a, it's not an effort. If every time you have to bring him in and out, you don't have plays, it's one thing. So that's like a very serious inconvenience. However, but if it's, you're able to arrange it, it's there. Today, Baruch Hashem, you know, you live in, in the suburbs, you, you can build a sukkah. You could ha- if you want, you could have a bookcase in the sukkah with a svarim and whatever you need. It's amazing. Some people have sukkahs, you know, they have sinks, you know, uh, with, with plumbing and everything in the sukkah. Not because they take the roof off. You know, they set it up specially for sukkahs. Yeah. Look, the plumber also has to make a living. Okay. Rotsa mispalel. Rotslome be'eza mokom she'esh lo menucha yosel ispal be'kavona. Whatever is the best location to daven, that's where you should daven. Wherever you have greater kavona, shom mispal vim hoyu lo be'sakness biro. Now, we have a, this concept of kedushas be'saknesses. So therefore, you, could, you can't compare it. The sukkah doesn't have kedusha v'shul. Meniach sukkoso v'holech lo beis haknesses. No question, the beis is, is is preferable over the sukkah, even though the sukkah could accommodate could accommodate the minion. 
Shekain b'shayi Moshe Shana gam miniach di rosh holech lo beis knesses. He says, in addition, you have to live in the sukkah the way you live in your home. So during the year when you daven, you don't daven, you don't have a minion in the house. You go to shul to daven. So therefore, the sukkah is no different than your home. You conduct yourself in the sukkah as you conduct yourself in your home. So during the year, you leave your home to go to shul. So on sukkahs, you leave the sukkah to go to shul. The same idea. Vavdola, what about havdola? Mavdu basukah. Havdola, you should do in the sukkah. Why? See, this he has to address because according to the Mechabu wine, you're permitted to drink outside the sukkah. So, so, so there's nothing wrong. So say havdola in the house. So the reason why you're saying it because not because of the wine, because it's havdola. Where do you normally say, say havdola? Right? You say havdola, you say havdola in the house. So therefore, since the sukkah is the equivalent, is supposed to take the position of the house. So they put the right things to say Abdullah in the sukkah. Yeah, the the Mechaber before. Right. You don't leave money. No, you yeah, don't leave money on your table. It's, it's like your house. Exactly, because you don't leave. You, you remove it from the table. Glasses you leave on the table, yeah. right? That's how we, we differentiate. Yardu Gashomim. I remember many years ago, I said in Sukkot Shemini so, you know, it's a question, I said. So I remember years ago, I would go back to Baltimore when I was uh, maybe uh, 17, 18 years old. I'd go back for Shemini Yatzeris So um, there was a Rebbe I had, it was the second Shir in the base Medrash, and w once he started to talk, he was so engrossed in his subject matter, it's like he was out of touch with anything around him. And I remember I, we went there. It must have been Sukkot that year. It must have been 30 degrees. <laughs> we went to the Sukkah. He started to say this year. It must have been about 11.30 at night he started to speak. <laughs> and with a few of my friends, we were literally shivering in the Sukkah. Shivering. And here he's fully involved saying this year, like, like, you know, like you have the heat at, at 80 degrees in the Sukkah. He's oblivious to the cold. And we're literally bundled up, coats, gloves, a hat, and we're freezing. And, you know, so, so what? So he'd say, you're not permitted to remain there. But it'd be a disrespect. What, you're going to walk out and just let him say a shir? So, again, it's like the, the story of Rokhai Moser, you know. So I'm not, we're not staying in the sukkah for the sukkah. It would, be, it would be a disrespect. So we had to say, we sat there till who knows what, 1 o'clock in the morning, freezing. I don't even think he served food, you know. <laughs> Would have been a dis disrespect. Look, we, we knew we knew his, we knew him well. You know, during the year he would, you know, in those days, the food in yeshiva wasn't that abundant. So he would always finish a half an hour after the, the lunch time would begin. <laughs> and because when he was involved, he was oblivious to time. In those days, a shiv was an hour and forty-five minutes. It wasn't like today, 15 minutes is a sheer maximum because the kids can't, they don't have attention span more than an hour and 45 minutes. And sometimes he, he would go two hours and 15 minutes. We come to the dining room, there'd be no food left on the table. No food left on the table. So one of the students said to him afterwards, you know, maybe he, he, he was upset. He was upset with him. Whether he had a right to be upset or not, you know, you know, the and you value that more than this. But factually, by the time we get there, you know, we have to scrounge around to find something to eat, you know, because there's nothing left. You know, it's like after the locust cup, what's left? Okay, <laughs> little background history. Whatever is. This is pre air conditioning. Okay. In the summer, you sweltered. In the, summer in the winter, you froze. Hey, Yarduk Shomim, what about if it starts raining? I raise a nichnas and toch haboyus. You leave the sukkah, you go into your house. Meimasai mutal lefanos. When are you permitted to vacate the sukkah? Mishyardu toch hasukkah tipos shim yipul toch hatav shili posik. According to Gemara. That if it rains, where when it drips into the sukkah, when the rain goes onto your food, the food becomes inedible, because of the drain, raindrops that go into your into into your food, I feel tapshe shall pull. Even a bean soup, 
tavshil, which are made of beans, which, which spoil easily or become affected more easily by that, you know, you say, you know, a little raindrop on your chicken is not going to make it, that doesn't make a difference. Even tavshil shall pull, for a pull that we're talking about, not, nothing of any great value. Pull of beans. But if you lay in the tavshil of fun of, what about you not eating? Just sitting there. It starts drizzling. Do you have a right to go in? So you say, if actually there'd be food here, it would be enough reason to go in, you have a right to leave the sukkah at that moment. What a person is not really, doesn't know exactly to what degree does it have to rain. It's not, you know, you have a bowl of bean soup, you bring it out to, you know, to know exactly when you can go in. You know, like today, you know, at the Seder, I don't know if they have it, but years ago they had, they manufactured these cards that you would measure the size of the leaves to make sure you had yeah, enough. Today, what? Yeah, or, you know, matzah, you, you, know, you measure it. On the thing, cake. They're gonna have a, you know, bean soup. Today they have a thing, uh, a special glass they sell in the store that you break under the chuppah. You know, one time, they, you know, years ago when they used flash cubes, the photographer would give the what's his name, the caterer would give you a flash cube, wrap it in a napkin, step on it. What difference does it make? Whether it's a glass or it's a flash cube. Today you buy a special glass, specially designated to break under the chuppah. Cost about a hundred dollars. And one time, the wedding ring cost $100. Today, the, the, the glass you break is $100. Okay? So, Mishay the Boki Bezech, Hashir, you're not sure exactly what is the shear. If you'd have bean soup, the soup would be actually affected negatively. Yisharim, Yedu Kohak Shom Labaisim Hayotzi. It would be raining, you'd have a leak in the house. It would be raining into the house to this degree. Would you leave the room where you'd have that leak in the, in the ceiling? Yetzim Yisukos Gabke. Then you should go out. Maybe there was a. There was a Yeki who lived in Baltimore many years ago. He was a cattle dealer from Germany. And he ruled with an iron hand his sons. And his sons were in the business with him. They weren't children. And they were, they were built like cattle dealers, these, these people. In, in the East Coast, they were like, you know, if uh, um, dairy farms, they would mm -hmm. sell the, the cows to the dairy farms. And then they would, you'd had a trade in. Because when a cow gets older, it can't produce milk, so they'd give you something for the old cow, and they, they would trade it in, for, you know, and they'd sell them a new cow. And they would sell the old cows to Campbell's. That's, that's what they would use the, the meat, the Campbell's soup. That's what they'd use the meat for. So this man, he ruled with an iron hand. It could be literally, the water could be coming through the schach. You, you boys who sit here. <laughs> And he, he insisted they sat, and they sat. They got drenched. It didn't make a difference. That, that's no, I'm not, I understand. It's violated. The, the, the son shared it with me. You know, the father in those years didn't know. You know, of course, in Europe, he sacrificed for his Yiddishkeit, no matter what. You know, you're going to sit regardless of how wet you become. You're in here. You know, you see old pictures of the cowboys. You know, rain. You know, they, they drenched snow. They, you know. N nothing affected it. Maybe they weren't in I'm not sure. Okay. So what would 